<clears throat> okay, we're going to have a look at the structure of DNA, and the you you probably will have known about the structure of DNA from GCSE biology, certainly, and if you don't you do an A level biology in more detail, uh, and in that context, you, we're looking at how uh, DNA can contain the uh, the genetic code. Um, the emphasis in, in this this unit is a bit more it's a bit more just the the chemistry what which bonds are involved in which holding which bit of dna together um so right you're probably familiar with this already this is this shows you the the basic this shows you what dna so oh by the way as well this set of structures here this is on your data sheet okay you get that um i don't know why glucose is on there um because um doesn't really get much of a mention um here's the the sugar okay deoxyribose now what we have is we have a backbone of sugars linked together by the phosphate groups okay and then um attached to every sugar sorry attached to every sugar we have uh one of these bases and there are four different bases there's adenine guanine cytosine and thymine okay and so those bases stick out there there are two strands so you have this is this is one strand and that will run in one direction and it's always paired up with another strand of dna which runs in the opposite direction um and the, what that means really is the uh, uh if you look at this carbon atom here number five that is uh and this is carbon atom number so that one's number five and that one is number three well they are linked to the phosphate groups by carbon atom five and three so this would be five and the three would be attachment there five and then the three with the attachment there whereas on this strand it's going the other way that would be three and five uh and three and five and so on you see when we when we draw the, the structures of the bonds that will be a bit clearer but they're called anti-parallel strands because they run in opposite directions right those bases stick out into the middle uh of the structure and the green dots are to show there are sort of represent hydrogen bonds what holds the two strands together is the bases can hydrogen bond with with each other uh, now you, you will know this from GCSE. You remember that um, if we look at, if we look at the bases we've got here, we've got the four bases, um, and whenever you've got A on one strand, so there's one strand, then you've got A sticking off it. That can only hydrogen bond to T on the opposite strand, and likewise if you have G on this strand, that can only hydrogen bond to C cytosine on that and likewise if I put T there then that means on this strand it's got to be A uh, if I put C here then on this strand it's got to be G okay and they the the way that they only certain bases can hydrogen bond with the others is really important for uh, encoding the genetic information Right, so that's the basis that's the basics of it uh this um these two strands are twisted into twisted into a imagine a ribbon and you twist that and they're twisted into a helix which is a spiral shape and because there's two of them it's called a, a double helix right it's probably also important it's probably should also mention at this point i'm going to draw this down here is that dna is a polymer okay and this is the this is the basic building block this is the monomer and that is called a nucleotide and in a nucleotide you'll see that the phosphate group is always attached to carbon uh, number five in the nucleotide and the way that's going to polymerize is uh, so if i get another one um, phosphate sugar base the way that will polymerize is this carbon um, uh, 
so that's attached to number five. This phosphate will stick onto carbon number three of this sugar, and this phosphate will go into a carbon number three of the next sugar, and so on. Okay, so the, the monomers are called nucleotides, and the phosphate in the monomer is always stuck to the fifth uh, carbon on the sugar. Right, now I'm just going to shrink that and go over here. Right. And what we've got here is I've shown the structure of, well, showing you how the nucleotide is put together. All right. So you get your, have you got, have a look at your AQA data sheet and um, before you go into the exam, you know how to use it. Um, you know exactly what's on there. Right. So what we've got here in black is this is ribose, deoxyribose. Now that is going to link to the phosphate group, um, but right, you'll lose the elements of water there. Okay, uh, that's gonna link there. And the base is joined with this, uh, for the hydrogen here, you're gonna lose the elements of water there, H2O, and it's gonna form a bond. So I'll show you how that, how that joins up in a minute. But it's, it's a good idea to be aware of which one of those nitrogens on the base actually joins onto the sugar and to draw a circle around it. So it's 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 easy to remember it's always the bottom one so it's that one it's that one in cytosine and then in these two which you've got a five and a six membered ring it's always the nitrogen on the five membered ring on the bottom it's that one there so i would uh get your own data sheet and, and annotate it obviously when you're doing the exam you won't have that but um so that you're very familiar with the data sheet when you go in there so that's where the that's where they attach to the sugar on those um the great the nitrogen there to the sugar now also what i would do is i will number the i would number the carbon atoms in the sugar and this is number one that's number two this is three four and five now the important ones are three and five because that's where they can attach, that's where they attach to the, uh, to the phosphate groups. Now in this is, we're gonna join this together to form a nucleotide. So I'm gonna go over here now and I'm gonna change it. So that's the basic building blocks. So I'm gonna uh, rub this bits out and, and modify it. So now we've got that nitrogen directly bonding to that carbon there, which is actually carbon number one. Um, we're going to rub out that, lose the water there. And we're going to have that, that phosphorus atom joining onto an oxygen there. And that oxygen is attached to number five, carbon atom number five. And that is the nucleotide. Okay. And for circle number three, because what's going to happen is you're going to get this. Uh, this is where it's going to attach number three. There, it's going to attach to another uh, phosphate group, and uh, <coughs> the, the nucleotides will polymerize to form one strand of DNA. So th that's a nucleotide. That's the monomer. Let's see how they polymerize together. So we'll see which covalent bonds are formed there. Right, so I've drawn three here. Right, let me shrink that a little bit. Right, now I need to get that oxygen and join it onto that carbon atom number three there. So let's try and do that. So I'll circle that. And try and bring that up here. Okay. Uh, good. 
Right, it's the same base as I didn't. I'm not going to draw a different base every time. This is thyme, no, it's, it's thymine in that one, I think. Okay, so what I need to do is lose water from there. So I'm going to attach onto number three. And that would be a dinucleotide. Right, let's stick another one on. Put another one down here, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to drag that one across. Move that one up to there. And just rub that out. And we've now got a trinucleotide. Okay, so it's attached to... Um, that. So we've got one strand of DNA there uh, and it's a it's a trinucleotide okay so we've just got to build up that um, and on this strand on this side here of course we're going to have a uh, another strand of DNA that's going to be running the opposite way you can see here I've got my five prime it's sometimes called a five prime and here I've got the three prime so that's running five prime to three prime this one will be running three prime to five prime upside down and it will be hydrogen bonded to this strand okay just uh, another thing before we finish on that before i talk about the hydrogen bonding um is let's what is that linkage called well it's called well so daisy there we go this linkage here is called a phosphodiester. A phosphodiester. You probably see why it's called a uh, a diester and a phosphodiester. Well, you've got a, instead of having a carbonyl here, you've got you've got a, a phosphorus oxygen double bond, and it's forming like an ester on either side, and one there and one on that side. And that's why it's called a phosphodiester. Um, and that's the linkage, linkage between the nucleotides. Okay. Um, right, now let's have a look at the base pairing. Okay, so we've got this, and they have asked this a few times, so I would be, I'd know how to, to, to do these. Now, you, we know that thymine base pairs T, base pairs to A, and cytosine G base pairs, cytosine C base pairs to G. Right, and this is your AQA data sheet, and it's quite conveniently laid out to do this because, right, um, right let's just remind ourselves what, which one stuck to the, which one stuck to the DNA, right? Remember, it's that one, that one, sorry, stuck to the, the sugar, that one, okay? Now, all I've done there is I've got thymine and I haven't rotated it or anything. I've just cut and pasted it and stuck it down there. Uh, so I haven't changed the orientation and I've done the same with adenine. I haven't, I haven't changed its orientation. All I've just done is I've just moved it. And if you do that, it's quite easy to, to draw the hydrogen bonds. Now, T and A, uh, you, it's a good idea to remember, T and A, they only form two H bonds, whereas C and G, they form three H bonds between them. Right, so I'm gonna draw the hydrogen bonds. Now this, this NH2 group here, and I will instead of drawing it as, I'm gonna draw the H, well the NH2, because they form the hydrogen bonds, and you have an H coming off this one as well. And don't forget, you're going to have a lone pair on this oxygen. So you've got two lone pairs, but that's the one you want. And a lone pair on that nitrogen. And the hydrogen bonds, you're going to form, I draw them in green. One there between the oxygen and the hydrogen. One there between the nitrogen and the hydrogen. Okay, so the important thing there, I didn't have to rotate them or anything. I just literally just moved them about. So when you get your data sheet, have a good look at it know how to draw the bond pairs between T and A. And now this one's C and G, which is a bit more tricky because there's three of them. But what we need to do there is, all right, we need to, again, 
this NH2, I'll draw it as separate H's coming off it. Um, I draw this as an H coming off this one and an H coming off this one as well. Right, now we've got lone pairs on the oxygen, on the nitrogen there, and on the oxygen here. And we form the hydrogen bond, that one there, that one there, and that one there. Okay, so that is um, basically the structure of DNA that you need to know from a chemistry point of view. Um, we're not so interested in the function of it, we're just interested in what kind of bonds we've got uh, and where they're formed from. I will say one thing to be careful of is um, do remember when we're looking at the nucleotide, the monomer, remember that everything is built up from it. Uh, it's important to remember the phosphate group on the monomer is on number five, okay? Uh, it's not on number three and you can't tell that by looking at that when you look at a complete nucleotide if you like go over here where, where we've got it you can't really tell from that was that formed we know was the phosphate there's a phos there's one phosphate per ribose but you can't really tell is it was the phosphate originally on that carbon or was it originally on that carbon well we know it's actually on this one it is on the five and it's not on the three and you should remember that Okay.